buy it at any price and sell it high, right? Isn't that the mantra? Buy it anywhere, sell it higher. Trading is easy, right? Unfortunately, the market doesn't do that. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly update show, weekend show. Hope everybody is doing okay. Uh, we got two weeks left, folks. Uh, Santa Claus is coming to town. Uh, kids are excited, right? Spouses are excited. Family's excited. Family's healthy. Very, very important time. Again, this year could have been really messed up for a lot of people, and it has been. It really has been, especially small business, the pandemic, so forth and so on. But again, it's gone, man. We're still here. We're still laughing. We're still smiling. Uh, we made it through, right? Not you know all the way through. There is no finish line yet. Again, the vaccine is underway. It's starting to uh, play out. Some people are taking it so far and so far. Fingers crossed. But the point is, again, guys, life is going to throw curveballs at you. Okay, it's never going to be lollipops and gumdrops and daisies at the beach. Okay, as we all know, life is hard only for the first hundred years, right? From what I understand. So we're going to always face adversity. It's very, very important to understand that. The faster you teach your children that at an early age, that life is not fair, that things are going to go wrong, uh, that you might work hard and still see no results. Okay, this is all part of the game. And unfortunately, you know, you have two choices. You could either embrace adversity, okay, or you could fall victim to it. Again, that's your only choice. And trading is no is no different. Uh, when you first start your first two, three years, you're going to face everything. You know, you're going to get thrown everything, including the kitchen sink. And I say this all the time. If you don't think about quitting trading at least 50 times a week in your first three years, you're, you're not human, right? You're just not. Everybody goes through it. Everybody has their self-doubts. Everybody at some point in their lives uh, in this trading game, the first three to five years, you have that whole woe is me self-pity. But again, just like in life, just like in trading, again, you have to two choices. You could either fight through uh, the difficult times, the learning curve, and all that stuff that comes with it, or you can be a victim to the woe is me self-pity, let me go away and do something else. That's it. That's all your two choices. And the unfortunate reality is, Life is going to mirror trading, and mirror, trading is going to mirror art. Uh, the more that thick skin you have, uh, the more work you put in, the more uh, chances that you are going to thrive and going to be here for the long term. But again, it's all up to you. Instead of sitting there and complaining and trying to give yourself 30 different excuses why things are not working out, just accept it's all part of the learning curve. It's all part of the business. Every trader before you it went through it. Every trader after you is going to go through it. The difference between somebody trading for 20 years and somebody trading for tw 20 weeks, the person for 20 years got the kitchen sink thrown at them, okay, took the adversity, swallowed it, embraced it, and moved forward. So again, for all you new traders out there, again, the hardest business in the world. Don't anybody even tell you even otherwise. The hardest business in the world. But there is a light at the end of the tunnel, and time cures everything. Time cures FOMO. Time cures um, the ability to manage risk the proper way. Time cures the idea that you are going to realize that losing money is part of the cost of doing business. And another thousand moving parts that we could literally sit here for hours and talk about. So don't put a lot of pressure on yourself, okay? Don't expect... You know, to mirror somebody that's been trading for 15, 20, 30 years. You're in your infancy stages. Again, before any child could run, right, run and, you know, jump and climb the monkey bars, they have to hold their head up first, right, as, as a baby. They have to learn how to sit up first. They have to learn how to crawl. Life is all about stages. Trading is all about stages. Don't put a lot of pressure on yourself. Your time will come and you will have that aha moment. As long as you're putting in the work and you develop thick skin, you are going to be okay in time. So I uh, hope everybody just kind of gets a little message because I know a lot of new traders, they, they sit there and they doubt themselves and they think it's only them. Trust me, every trader has gone through it. 
you'll get through it as well. Again, keep your head up. Everything will be fine. Um, let's talk about the tape. So market's been on a tremendous run. We got two weeks left to Santa Claus comes. Uh, two weeks, roughly two, two and a half weeks into the year. 2020 has been a really aggressive year uh, for the stock market, completely the opposite of what's been going on uh, in the real world. And the most important part, kind of going into the last two weeks, and especially going into uh, the first quarter of 2021, is just have a level head, exp you know, level head uh, expectations. Uh, again, when you look at, for example, the IPOs, just to give you an, an idea how aggressive this tape is, if you look at the IPOs, they just came public in the last you know several days. The Airbnbs and the DoorDash. Okay, Airbnb doubled because of the market climate. Uh, Airbnb doubled on its first day. DoorDash was only up only eighty percent. Okay, that shows you how much euphoria still is in this market. And and I've said this um, you know every day now for for a very very long time. Really important that you understand what this market is and what this market has become. What this market is, is designed for long-term investing. It really is, okay? Day trading and short-term interval trading is man-made, okay? It's something that we either developed or adopted as part of our core routine. So the market itself, it's not structured for the day-to-day -day trader. So the idea that the market has to give you something every single day is nonsense, okay? The market's been here 200 years before, maybe even longer than that, okay? And the point is, I'm joking, uh, and the point is it'll be here 200, 300, 400 years unless a missile comes and, you know, UFOs come and kill us all, which could have possibly happen in 2021. So you have to level your expectations going to this new year, okay? You have to temper your enthusiasm a little bit, okay? Usually IPOs that, you know, double on their first day, are a byproduct of what we see in the stock market and what we've been seeing in the stock market. When you look at SPAC plays, and I didn't know what a SPAC was, right? I had no idea what a SPAC was. And somebody tried to explain to me, well, you know, there are shell companies that acquire other companies. And the first thing I thought about was shell companies acquiring. First thing I thought about was Ozark. I go, you mean like what Marty Bird does? You mean like money laundering? Allegedly, right? So when you look at what SPACs are doing and you look what uh, all these EV companies are doing, okay, it's phenomenal. It's absolutely marvelous to watch, but this is not normal. Everybody understands it's not normal. So to have the idea that this is going to continue for 2021, you know, might be a little aggressive. And the reason why I, I bring this up specifically now is kind of what we saw in the last three days. And this is kind of why I want to start the update. So if everybody has been watching this broadcast, you, you, you know what the market is doing, right? The Qs broke out of this 294 level, went up 10 days in a row, had that big rug pull on Wednesday. And for the last couple of days, they've done really, really well holding this bottom range here. But in the mean process, in the meantime, the last three days, you saw a common denominator. And that common denominator was stocks were not aggressive enough to go back up, but there wasn't any fear to go down. And what that means is bulls are not ready to go up yet, but bears don't have enough ammunition to take it down. And what that's commonly known as one of the ugliest words uh, in the trader's vocabulary, and for all you new traders, uh, you should really hear it, okay? It's called distribution, okay? Imagine, again, the bulls and bears uh, sitting in a phone booth uh, with pillows trying to hit each other, right? Nobody's doing any damage. The problem is this is also called the chop factor. And the chop factor will show you that bulls and bears are going to have a little bit of light in the same day, okay? You're gonna see a lot of strength in the market. You're going to see a lot of weakness in the market. And that's what we started seeing from Wednesday all the way up to yesterday. And if you notice what beta has been doing, right? Uh, the Teslas, the Amazons, the Netflixes of the world, the Apples of the world, the Facebooks of the world, slowly but surely, they have their really big days. And you say to yourself, okay, this is it. They're finally going to go on a big run. And then for the next three, four days, they sit in tight channels. And that's the biggest problem. That's the biggest problem that I've been seeing. Uh, we saw a really aggressive week this week, but the aggressive day came on Monday when Tesla finally broke out over that 600, 608 level. And then two days later when Square really, really exploded and Roku really, really exploded. 
And then we had nothing, right? We had two days, like on Friday, yesterday's session for me was nothing. I lost some money on, on FSLI. And then my next three trades, I made some money, but very, very small scalps because everything else was bunched up in ranges. And this is a very, very, very scary area for a lot of traders have been trading in a very aggressive market the whole year. They don't even realize what's going on, but this is the, the most easiest way to chop yourself up and not the way you chop yourself up, just little scalps, you know, little paper cuts. So you can chop yourself up to the point of you can give back a month's worth of trading literally in a couple of days because you're still pushing. You still have that memory of the market from a week ago, two weeks ago, how hot it is. Buy it at any price and sell it high, right? Isn't that the mantra? Buy it anywhere, sell it higher. Trading is easy, right? Unfortunately, the market doesn't do that. And, and when you go into a distribution cycle, somebody is trying to seize control of the moment. Somebody's trying to seize control of the interval. The problem is that usually lasts for about a week, right? We're about three days in. So distribution can show you come Monday morning, a really hot open and then fade away for the rest of the day or a really big gap down and start grinding back to the rest of the day. Again, strength and weakness in the same day. So if you look at a channel, and again, we, we, we speak about technicals. We don't, we don't speak about what happens if. We speak about technicals where the market is. And if you look at the NASDAQ composite via the QQQs, you'll notice we have three days in a row of lower highs, right? And again, like I said on Wednesday's update, don't lose your minds, okay? The reason why we had that really, really big pull in the queues because the queues were up 10 days in a row. So this wasn't an, an area for us to turn around and say, that's it, this is the top of the market, it's time to go, you know, time to go, uh, time to go short. It's not, we're not even close to that. Matter of fact, we're still way above this channel here that broke out above the 294. So until we actually close above the 294, that should raise some eyebrows. And again, look at this long-term distribution that's going on on the 50 day moving average. So until that happens, again, the bulls will always get the benefit of the doubt. Can you get a rug pull here and there? Of course, and you should always be conscious to that. But the idea that you turn around and say, well, this is the market reversal. I think you're getting a little ahead of yourself. And this is what exactly what happened on Thursday's session when people thought we were gonna have day two. And all I kept on saying is until we actually confirm that day two, don't, you know, again, go calmly. Don't overthink. Let them price action talk to you. And they held in the last two days putting green candles, which basically means they're higher closes than opens. So we have a definitive line that we have to see going into this week, right? The bulls need to reclaim this 304 level on the queues. And the bears need to reclaim this 298. This is our channel. And here's going to be the problem. When you have a channel that is that narrow, it's going to need some time to get out. Now, I think we're day three, maybe day three going into Monday's session. Usually what happens in distribution is they're going to go sideways. And it's going to go up and down, up and down, up and down. And especially for all you new traders, you're going to go through several things. Number one, you're going to give back a day very, very quickly if you don't realize what's going on here. You're going to give back a day, then you're going to give back two days. And then you're going to not even realize what's happening and you're going to start pushing and pushing. I'm here to tell you we're going to in, we're in distribution right now. Okay, so your level of activity needs to be, especially if you're an intraday trader, your level of activity needs to to be a little bit pulled back. Okay, you you can't put on 20 trades in a distribution cycle. Matter of fact, if you look at Friday's action, every trade that literally I was in was going up 30, 40 cents and coming right back in. Okay, and I made a joke. Uh, I made a joke about it. I go, can anything stay up more than two minutes? That's what she said, right? So this is the market that we're in. And especially for all you guys who are trading on the option side and you've been buying premium for weeks and weeks and months and months, well, what do you think is going to happen in the distribution cycle when Amazon's trading in an $8 range? Netflix is trading in a $2 range. Facebook is trading in a $2 range. Your premium goes to hell in a handbasket just like that, okay? So you have to understand the dynamics of this market. Now, there's a difference between when you hear social media people turn around and say, well, you got to sit on your hands, cash is a position, right? That's a crutch of saying when the market goes down, they don't really know what to do. And there's a lot of people, unfortunately, use that crutch as cash as a position when the market heads down. And unfortunately, they don't have the process to capitalize. But that's a whole different conversation. When you're in a distribution cycle, there's a difference between cash sitting on your hands because of lack of process or waiting patiently for the distribution cycle to kind of end. And again, like I said, it usually does end within 
you know, a week, okay? Uh, usually there's a side, they finally seize control and the natural course of the action uh, continues in that, in that matter. But again, it's not a sign of weakness that you're waiting for this to play out. It's a sign of maturity, okay? And you have two choices. You could either completely say, forget about what this idiot's saying, which is what my wife says, right? Or really just think about what I'm doing. I mean, I'm going on my 21st year. I've kind of seen this movie before. It's like watching Scarface 30 times, right? Believe me, Tony dies at the end. Spoiler alert, right? To you know, Tony doesn't retire on a beach in Costa Rica. He dies, right? So as many times as you watch the movie, the same scenario plays out over and over again. We're in distribution. Take it, you know, take this advice, leave this advice. That's up to you. But until the cues reclaim, okay, 304, or the bears reclaim 298, you're going to be stuck in the cycle. So what do you do, right? Logically, what do you do? Number one, like I said a few minutes ago, uh, take down your level of aggression, tier size, right? If you're, you're not supposed to be trading full size in a distribution model because number one, again, there is no aggression, there is no fear. Number two, scalp, right? And you know, it's a dirty word. I know a lot of people look down on it, right? Especially the longer term investors. I know you guys are so cool holding something for 30 years. I get it, I get it. But the rest of us deviants, right? The rest of us de degenerates and heathens that actually trade the intraday market, it's actually pretty cool, right? It's not the worst thing in the world. So for all of us idiots, the rest of our idiots that love to kind of trade intraday channels, just understand the range on a Netflix won't be $12 for the day, won't be $18 for the day, it might be three. So if you get 50 cents to a dollar, take some off. It goes up another dollar, two dollars, take some off. And if you are lucky, the distribution channel ends and maybe it does go up $10. But again, we can't anticipate that. So you have to be in cash flow mode this week. Long, short, whatever the case may be. Again, if you're trading these crazy $3 stocks, go up $9 in a day, this, this isn't for you. My advice, this isn't for you. I'm, I'm talking about for the people who are trading beta, who do trade technology names, the Microsofts, the Apples. Again, the $2 stocks are going to do, and if that's your thing, that's your thing. This really has nothing to do with you. But anybody who trades any type of technology, your semiconductors, your internet names, the Teslas of the world, right? We're, we have to curb our enthusiasm until these channels really start to reclaim. And if you're trading on the option side, don't even think about buying premium, okay? I'm not, selling, I'm not telling you to sell premium either, but the idea that you're buying something $20 out of the money during a distribution cycle, you might as well just give your money to charity, okay? There's a 10% there's chance that your premium, unless there's some crazy PR that comes out overnight, that's gonna make your, your trade hold. So, it's an ugly situation, but it, it happens all the time, right? Distribution does happen, what, three, four times a year? It feels like once a quarter. It only lasts about a week, okay? And again, you have two choices. Either, either really understand that this is happening and say to yourself, well, you know what? Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday might be a little bit less aggressive. I could either trade or trade responsibly or forget about what this guy just said and just keep on pushing and pushing and pushing. Okay. And again, you might not feel it monetarily. Okay. Maybe you'll have a couple of paper cuts, but sitting around and waiting for distribution to end is mentally exhausting. By the time uh, two o'clock, two thirty came around on Friday, I was burnt out, man. I, I didn't even want to look at the market. I didn't care about the market by two thirty. I was so tired of waiting because again, it, it's so it takes so much effort to scalp for such a short period of you know, such a short period of intervals what we saw on friday 20 cents 30 it's so difficult that it's mentally exhausting it's almost it's almost like you know getting hit with a monster drawdown that's the same thing so it took me literally you know 15 hours to kind of get back to normal to kind of get my, my battery reduced um so it's very very important to kind of understand going into this week uh, if you look at the indexes this week, they're not going to paint the picture. Everything is down, you know, 1%, a little less than 1%. Uh, I do like the fact that the NASDAQ 100 uh, held the Qs, right, held this bottom, this bottom range here. But again, like I said, they either need to reclaim 304 on a close or the bears need to reclaim 298. And the moral of the story is, again, patience is a virtue and you will get rewarded if you let this distribution channel kind of play out. Other than that, again, a uh, very aggressive week on Monday, a uh, very aggressive day on Wednesday, and then you had, Tuesday was okay, and then you had several days that were just really, really mentally 
challenging. Like Friday for me, yesterday for me, it was just so damn slow. Uh, but again, there's nothing you can do about it. There really isn't. And, you know, part of this whole trading journey is that you have to understand the times to really, really get aggressive and put your foot down on the pedal and time to kind of scale it back. Um, and this is one of those times. This is one of those times until we get those levels confirmed one way or another. So going into this week, again, you know, Disney looks amazing, right? I believe they're coming out with some sort of uh, new Star Wars uh, stuff. So any dip on Disney uh, needs to be bought. If you look at Disney, had a monster run. And oh, by the way, okay, here's, here's a point when people talk about somebody always knows something. Somebody always knows. Two and a half. Um, weekly calls. The problem with that is that was $9 out of the money. So somebody always knows something. So I like Disney on any dips, especially uh, if it could get, especially if it could get into the 169, 170 area. Um, I think it's a pretty good area to come back here. Uh, Tesla, again, what a fantastic job. Uh, and it really does show you the demand uh, for Tesla shares. You know, they absorb this uh, offering within three days. Again, Tesla needs for, for Tesla to wake up. And again, I, I, I see these incredibly aggra aggressive out of the money bets, millions of dollars, and I get it. But until that happens, it really needs to clear out this channel. Okay, it needs to go back. And again, you see all, all throughout the week, uh, the 650s, the 700 weeklies, and they all expired, uh, obviously worthless. So there's a lot of money being bet. But again, guys, remember, before you can run, you need to be able to sit yourself up, be able to crawl, and then slowly to walk. And again, needs to take out this channel here. So uh, going into uh, this week, you know, I'm delta neutral. I really am. Uh, again, we have two weeks left in the year. I'm not in any hurry uh, to recreate the wheel. The, the action this year has been phenomenal. Uh, and again, I hated to admit this for the first you know, half of the year, but yeah, it's pretty comparable.com. And for all you guys uh, who traded during you know, 99 and 2000, I think everybody has to admit it by now. This is if it's not dot-com action, it's pretty damn close and just really, really uh, aggressive uh, action. So going into this week, again, when you look at the other uh, ETFs, uh, IWM is holding up very, very well. Again, the small cap names, the rotation has been absolutely phenomenal. For all you guys who do trade these small and mid-cap names, I mean, you see it. I mean, the market's been uh, really, really blessing you this year. Hopefully, again, just keep on taking advantage of it. Uh, the Dow continues to, you know, to be you know, kind of stuck in this channel. But again, when you're stuck in the channel at all-time highs... It's not really the worst thing in the world. Uh, the biotechs, again, with all this Pfizer news, right? Pfizer news and uh, AstraZeneca, I think, came out uh, buying out um, Alexion. Uh, you know, the bios look, look really, really good. Again, now from the Main Street part of America, or actually Main Street part of the world, now we need these vaccines to be rolled out. We need these vaccines to be uh, good, right? And with very limited... Um, you know, very limited uh, side effects. And, you know, we, for 2021, my, my biggest request is, number one, to stay healthy and happy, right? But number two is just to kind of go back to life, you know, take the little things that we took for granted for years and years and years, just going to uh, a ball game, right? Uh, just doing anything, the little things that we took for granted, but now we desperately want back. So again, guys, we have two weeks left in the year. Uh, stay very, very patient. Stay very, very calm. Again, screen time, just time in general will make you a better husband, better wife, better parent, and especially a better trader. Guys, God bless you all. I love you, everybody. And with God's help, I'll see you on Monday. Take care.